for us a ministerial nominee in the person of uh, uh, Madam Lola Adejan. Madam, you may now proceed to give us a summarized version of your resume, bearing in mind that we already have everything here. But any, if there's any other thing you want the Senate to know, you can go ahead and just use a few minutes to elaborate on them. The floor is yours. Your Excellency, President of the Senate, Your Excellency, Deputy President of the Senate, Principal Leaders of the Senate, Distinguished Senators from my state, Lagos, Wasiu Eshilonku, Sonny, Lagos Central, Oluwati, Adebule, Lagos West, and Tokubo Abiru, Lagos East, and all the distinguished Senators. It is an absolute pleasure that I am standing before you in this hallowed chamber. I never imagined in my lifetime that I would be here standing before you. And I, it is my prayer that this will not be my first, oh, it will be my first, but it will not be my last time. Thank you. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a widow. I'm a mother of two independent daughters. I am very passionate. I'm a very passionate person and I'm hardworking. And I believe I represent all the hardworking people, all the hardworking women, especially women in this country and Lagos. And I have been in the IT industry for over 35 years. I, I bring to you the skills that I have to um, carry out the vision of our president, um, President Ahmed Bola Tinubu, um, in international. When I mean international, I crisscross Africa, and I'm, I'm familiar with um, financial services in Africa. Um, when, if you talk about my my experiences and my skills, I want to assure you that um, we. I, I, the skills I have will help in bringing an um, increased revenue to the country. It will help to um, um, in, improve fiscal and operational um, efficiencies. It will um, help in po um, management of policy, um, uh, poverty alleviation. It will help in management of, of, of school children, their in, um, information on school children. It will help in managing um, our infrastructure maintenance and so many other things. Um, without technology, we, um, Nigeria, we, without technology, we'll be living in the past. We need to move forward and we need to live in the future, or the present and the future. Um, I know that some of the senators here um, are familiar with um, technology projects and what technology has done in their own industries. Um, and I know that with your support, um, Nigeria using technology will be great. Thank you. You are true? Yes. This is Mr. Sorry, Musa. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, sitting as chair my distinguished colleagues and the nominee, congratulations for being nominated. 
and going through your resume, I've seen that uh, all through you've been in the IT industry. And today, digital economy is taking over from products that we export. If you look at uh, the startups, where young Nigerians were able to build some softwares, which some applications which have been used, you will see major companies from United States coming to patronize them, taking them over. Now with that, a lot of direct foreign investments will be coming into our country. If for any reason you happen to find yourself in a position where you make policies in area of technology and also be the one to possibly do the implementation or supervise the implementation, how will you encourage building up hubs around the country, not just in a particular place, around the countries, like a technology village where maybe, or a startup village where young Nigerians will assemble, will be assembled and given all the necessary encouragement, funding, to be able to bring out their skills. Because that's one area that we need to build on. You know very much about the NFTs and the packages that AI today is coming, which is a big challenge, especially to the innovation and retail industry. How can we take advantage of those areas too in our own digital sector to boost our economy? That's my two questions. Thank you. The Chief Whip of the Service. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the nominee, Lola, being a gender sensitive nominee, and also to me, the most qualified of the female that came before us. You are 64, you are older than me by two months, and I believe that. Even your appearance corporately, and as a grandmother, as a widow. And I, I read your CV, I'm impressed. And therefore, I want to ask you this question. One of the major problems you hear in this country in the technology sector related to finance is the case of Yahoo Yahoo. And all this transaction of Yahoo Yahoo is through the banking system. It's not that people collect directly. This should be a matter of concern because mothers, widows, retirees lose their money to these young people who are desperate to make money, more especially because they are not employed. So what do you think you can bring to the table to address this serious challenge we have in the country. This is Senator Abiru. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. President, sitting as the chair, and my <clears throat> distinguished colleagues. My name is Senator Adetokumbo Abiru, and I represent Lagos East. First, I would like to congratulate Madam Nomini, uh, <clears throat> but I also like to admit that uh, the nominee is somebody that is well known to me for over 30 years, and <clears throat> you can tell if by looking at her CV uh, that she has crisscrossed the banking industry, and I'm a product of that industry as well. But her expertise in, um, in the banking industry is more in the area of technology 
and I can confirm that she had, she had played prominent roles in business transform transformation and strategy for most of the banks that uh, we have in Nigeria, particularly um, in the early 90s, when we had the, um, the when we were in the era of the, um, the new age banks. I believe very strongly, given the accomplishment that she's made in that in the industry, I believe very strongly that she's going to bring her expertise to bear in the current administration of our president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, particularly in the area of the reforms that are ongoing. And I make bold to say, I make bold to say that she will be very useful in the area of business process engineering that is required in most of our ministries today and the operational efficiency that we need to bring about in terms of improving our revenues and reducing um, the cost of, um, of oper I mean, operational cost of the country. I therefore, on behalf of the um, Lagos caucus, will appeal to my colleagues to support our nomination. I so submit, Mr. President, and my, my distinguished colleagues. Thank you very much. The, the minority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, our dear nominee, my name is Simon Mwadkon. I'm from Plateau State, and I represent Plateau North. Mr. President, sir, our dear nominee, my question is, from your resume, I noticed that you have done well in the banking and financial industry. And my question is on this issue of shares, banking shares and other company shares. Uh, I've noticed a trend in this country that you will see a company that is not doing well. And perhaps at a point in time, their shares is just maybe 100 naira. And they will go to the capital market and negotiate and raise the quality of their shares perhaps to 300 or 400 naira and then go to the capital market and advertise for people to come and buy shares. And at that time, the shareholding will be 300 naira. But after people have gone and they buy shares, the thing will crumble back to 100 naira or even less. You know, and the, the, the gullible public would have been robbed of their money and nobody would do something to help the people. There are also times, you know, a company will crumble and there's no security for the shareholders. Their money will be lost. I have lost quite a number of money in many banks and also companies. You know, there's no protection for the shareholders. Once the company goes bankrupt, the shareholders would have lost their money. With your knowledge of the banking and the financial industry, what do you think? Assuming you are confirmed or screened and confirmed as a minister, what will you do to help poor Nigerians that would have invested their monies in banks or in some companies by buying shares? And the companies perhaps would have come through fraudulent means to advertise those shares and nothing is done to protect them. Thank you. This is Senator Garba. Thank you very much, the Senate President sitting in as chair. My name is Garba Musa Maidoki, representing KB South Senatorial District. Lady nominee, I congratulate you, and I congratulate the President for giving females uh, opportunities in his government. Uh, we pray, we also agree what men can do, women can do better. So we want to give you the privilege of going to do better in the cabinet. But my concern today is about the banking 
charges. Somebody, a constituent of mine, sent me a text. You put 100,000 naira in your bank account. In three months, you didn't do anything. The charges are taking place. Your money now reduced to about 900,000. For not, you have not transacted any business. Then, yeah, uh, for, uh, for, uh, then a, co a company that is charging markup for selling of product, maybe five naira, or three naira, or one naira, if transfer are made to pay him, the bank deduct five, five naira, or three naira. He's not making any money. Please. Yes, sir. If you put 100,000 in your bank, three months later, you come back and say 900,000. Is that, is that, shouldn't you praise the bank? Uh, I wanted to say 90,000, your, ex your Excellency. Uh, uh, 90,000. And uh, Mr. Uh, Lady Nominee, the financial sector is milking Nigerians. Today, your deposit is not secured. You cannot take your money. If you have a domiciliary account, you cannot take your money. You take hard currency and deposit into the bank, and you want to withdraw it. The bank says there is no money because of regulations or issues like that. Generally, let me know, Bo, if you, are, you understand what the problems are. Please, how can you bring SECO? We want to encourage banking to every rural community. Some of them are just receiving 10,000. And if the bank continue making these charges, how can rural banking be encouraged? Thank you very much, Senator President. This is Senator Ned Mogul. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, my distinguished colleagues, um, my question is a very simple one. As an expert in the banking sector, I've always been concerned about interest rates in Nigeria. The charges, even the, the, the banking deposit interest rates, I understand to be about five to six percent. But the lending rates is about maybe 20 to 23 percent. I've always wondered why the government is not able to peg interest rates at a level that is possible for consumers in Nigeria to borrow money. After all, when you go to other nations, you will see that most of their lending rates is between one to five percent. And so everybody can prosper, everybody can borrow to buy whatever they want to buy whether it's for uh, mortgages or for vehicles or whatever. But the consumers in Nigeria are left to the whims and caprices of the banks. The banks make huge profits at the end of the day. Is there no possibility that a government cannot ensure that banking interest rates are maintained to a barest minimum? for the interest of consumers. Thank you, Mr. President. The nominee, please let us hear you answer those few questions, and then others will still have the opportunity to ask. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. In response to um, the distinguished 
um, senators um, questions on bank charges and interest rates. I'll take those two together. These are determined by central bank. Central bank also takes directives from the presidency and the economy at large. They, it is determined by the state of, of, these rates are determined by what is currently happening in the country. So if the economy is buoyant, you have better interest rates. If the, if the economy is not buoyant, then the interest rates will be, will be high. So um, yes, the government will continue to work with Central Bank and the uh, Finance Ministry to um, ensure that um, these rates um, are acceptable or uh, uh, they can be accommodated by the general public. It's, um, it, it's not technology that determines these rates. It's, it's um, the economy, the financial, um, um, the financial system that determines that. Okay. Um, in, for protection, fraud protection in banks, um, shareholders, um, yes, We've all, we've all experienced um, some form of fraud or the other, um, even personally. Um, fraud, even though you have automated systems, fraud is perpetrated by individuals, by people. And in our country, we also need to ensure that we do not encourage fraudulent people. When we see that people yesterday are living a simple life and tomorrow they're living an expensive life, we need to ask the right questions. Where did they get the money from? And when we know that they didn't, they didn't make the money from, from legitimate means, we also have a responsibility to, to, to do the right thing, ask the right, ask the right thing because uh, we'll be encouraging it and the with technology if we have the right kind of database we will be able to track these people we have uh, identity management in different buckets we have them in in, um, in we have um, bvn nin all these different identity um, 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 systems if we had all of them together, where we consolidate them with the police, we consolidate them with all, um, all the various agencies, you'll find that we'll be able to track and monitor these fraudulent people better, and it will reduce. But everywhere in the world we have them. It is just that they have better systems, more efficient, and automated systems where you can trace them. And I am sure that um, um, we are going to pay in this country a lot more attention or we are going to um, invest in, the, um, in technology to ensure that we consolidate our data. Okay. Um, from the very first um, comment and observation, from the distinguished senator, he talked about um, our youth tech hubs and AI to increase revenue. It's already happening. It's already happening. We have tech hubs in some states and it's, it's being rolled out. Um, in fact, the truth is that we, we can't even run fast enough. The, um, our, our youth are embracing technology a lot faster than we of our own generation. And Mr. President has said that the youth own this country. 
and so it is it, it, it's going to happen and in fact one of the nominees that is going to come and uh, who's come to stand before you will also talk more about his own um, involvement in in this industry but for AI um, and virtual reality these are all the tools that um, we need today and I, I, I didn't want to be um, sarcastic, but the truth is that if we, if, if we had AI now, you probably wouldn't have to sit here all day because you'd be using them from, you know, wherever you are. So, yes, it's going to happen. The same as the Abiru and uh, you, you want to say something? Okay, okay. Because I don't want I don't want to I don't want to marginalize the Southwest. The the solution is always you. Thank you, um, the Senate President, Senator. Um, God is, God's will, Akwabio, um, distinguished um, colleague, colleagues, I rise today to first and foremost admit that um, Lola Ade John voted for me. <laughs> she is from my constituency and she is a proper and a fit person to occupy the ministerial position in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I still remain Wasil Sonia Shinloku. I want to say that our nomination has come as a beacon of hope for our women and also other genders alike. His unwavering commitment has been noted and we love all of this. We believe that she will be a paragon of success. She will break barriers and one of those who add value. As you all know, the digital economy, the blue economy, are what we will enjoy in the next um, few decades. It is uh, my belief that with Madame Lola Adejohn, the deployment of IT will be for positive use and it will enhance our economy. I do not want to throw her under the bus and say, please continue to ask questions. Please allow my people go. Thank you very much. Uh, my my Disney brother, uh, Cyril. <laughs> Um, the Senate President, sitting this afternoon as a chair, distinguished uh, colleagues, very few of us are familiar with uh, the nominee before you. And I'm also shocked when you call her Madam Lola Ade John. Because the woman standing before you likes to be called Lola. My path crossed with uh, Lola Ade John as a banker in 1998, Access Bank, to be very specific. I was a banker. And this woman standing before me was my boss. I wasn't working under her. <laughs> this woman, this woman standing before Nigerians in the entire banking industry, 98% of eggs of IT are men. She's one of the few in Nigeria that heads 
IT department in banks. You can see a CV from Shell to Magnum Trust to Access Bank. That was where I met her. This afternoon when I saw her, I was shocked. Um, it is just for all of us. Let me tell you, it is, yes, positive shock. It is just for all of us to remember one thing in life, that our paths can still cross in the future. And whatever you do today, you are going to repeat tomorrow. Lola Ade John was a nice AGM when we were in Access Bank. She was a very good person. She never discriminates. She respects everybody. She, I can continue. Mr. President, she is an uncommon lady. <laughs> a, a technology guru. I am also shocked when a lot of us ask questions in the banking industry. Lola is not a front office manager. She was a back office. IT is one of the departments that is back office. The issue of interest rate, um, uh, investment or something are meant for front office, like Tokumbo Abiru, like myself. We are commercial, we were commercial bankers. We could answer you better. But these are the people that secure your funds in the bank to ensure that there is no fraud. <laughs> Let Lola be. <laughs> Senate President, sir, distinguished colleagues, we need a Lola in this government. We need a Lola. Lola left UI as a, as a second class upper in real department that a lot of us will find difficult to pass through computer science. Lola is brilliant. Lola is good. Let Lola go. Let Lola breathe. <laughs> Thank you. Distinguished <laughs> uh, uh, Distinguished uh, colleagues and uh, distinguished nom uh, nominee, your subordinate, your staff, has just said, let Dollar go. You need to know that if we let you go, that means you are not going to be a minister. Um, so it's important that we screen you for the president instead of just telling you to go back home. I think that's our job here. So uh, distinguished Senator Idiot. As a, as a gender-friendly Senate, we should give you an opportunity to ask a question. Well, the Senate President, distinguished colleagues, I am Idiot Oluroti Adebule. I represent the good people of Lagos West. And I'm happy to see Mrs. Lola standing before us. Well done, my sister. Congratulations on your nomination as the Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Well, as a technology solution expert of many years of experience, decades of experience, I want to advise that by the grace of God, if your confirmation if you are confirmed, rather, I would advise that please pay special attention to our civil service. We need technology to drive the civil service for effectiveness. And that will be something that I would be so glad to see you doing by the grace of God. We can all, all be seated here, assuming that all is well out there. A lot still needs to be corrected. And that is why Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu has nominated you as one of the ministers of the Federal Republic. Therefore, a lot rests on your shoulder, and the good Lord will guide you. Thank you. And on that note, Your Excellency, permit me. 
We ask your indulgence to allow Lola Adejon to take her leave of the Senate. Thank you. Uh, distinguished colleagues, the last three speakers did not really ask any question. So I don't think there's any question before Lola. Is it the view of the Senate that Lola be allowed to take a bow and take leave of the Senate? Yes. Those who are supposed to say aye. aye. Those who are against say nay. The ayes have it. The nominee may now take leave of the Senate.